excuse me. Having trouble? Oh, a gem cannot be polished without friction, nor a man perfected without trials. I beg your pardon? Yeah, having trouble. Have you done those crime sheets yet, Jeff? Well, steady on, you only asked for them this morning. Oh. Chop, chop, one of them all signed off before Miller gets back. Why didn't they put Joe in charge? I'm sure he wouldn't be this bad. I've seen it all before. Power corrupts. As for the police station. Oh, uh, yes, Your Lordship. Er, uh, let me hand you over to PC Weatherby. Don? It's Lord Ashfordley, for you. Acting Sergeant Weatherby speaking. Is Sergeant Miller in? Uh, no, he's away on a course. Uh -huh. Oh, how about PC Mason? No, he's dealing with the breakdown. So who's in charge? It'll be done, Your Lordship. Acting Sergeant Weatherby. I'm afraid. Ah, I think uh, we need a new radiator. There's a garage just down the road. Where are you headed for? Uh, the Taoist Monastery in Middlesbrough. We are on our way from Liverpool. There's a Taoist Monastery in Middlesbrough? <laughs> just outside Middlesbrough, actually. It's new. So we are taking them a gift, a golden statue of Guan Yu. Well, it looks like you'll be here for some time. Welcome to Edensfield. I'll ask Bernie Scripps at the garage to come up and take a look. <laughs> I have a word with my staff. Yeah, well, give it our fullest attention. OK, bye. Trouble? Lord Ashfordley's just stocked his river with trout for a competition at the weekend. And since his gamekeeper's off sick, he's asked us to keep an eye on things. As well, as you're in charge, I'm sure you'd like to tackle some more serious police business. Oh, what's that? We've had a request from Lancashire CID. They've got a specialist antiques thief operating on their patch. And they've had a tip-off. The stolen goods are ending up here. In Ashfordley? Oh, a major league fence. He's hardly going to admit it, is he? Well, it sounds more interesting than crime sheets. OK, let's get on to it. Oh, hi, Mr. Timmons. Oh. How's your Terry doing? Oh, well, his chest's still bad. But you know what men are like. They won't have anyone near him. <laughs> Honestly, they're all saying. Uh, hey, you two! Tea's on the table at six and don't be late. Right, Mum. PC Mason! What's he doing? Aren't you going to do something about this? Like what? Move them on! I've got the North Riding Environmental Committee due here any day. We can't have the place looking like a scrapyard. They can't stay there. Well, technically they can because it's common land, and practically they're going to have to because they've broken down. How long is that going to take? I don't know. Let's ask them. Did you have any luck at the garage? Oh. Well, Mr Scripps ordered the parts, but it will take a few days. A few days? I really don't see any alternative, Mrs Jowett. Going. Seeking food. Begging? We've always relied on the kindness of strangers. Afternoon. I'm just closing. Mr. Brigstock? That's all right. What can I do for you? Do you have any Victorian snuff boxes for sale? Oh, yes. They're over there. We need to present a united front to the council. Well, it's hard to see what they can do unless they're creating a disturbance. But they are. They're banging on people's doors begging for food. Oh, well, we had one at the back door and he didn't bang, he just rang the bell. Oh. Well, did you give him anything? Of course we did. I gave him some pork pies. Hey, I was going to have one of those. Oh, there's plenty more in the fridge. Yeah, well, I think they're colourful. It makes a change round here. It's not their fault they broke down. Exactly. They're right, you know. So I suggest we just live and let live. But they're living on our village green.
right over the dam. What is it? There's somebody there. Where? Down by the river. Well, I can't see anyone. Lying down on the ground. I haven't seen anybody do that in years. <laughs> Who are you? Oh, I am Hawkward. I am with the monks in the village. And where did you learn to do that? In the Lake District. They call it guddling. Ah, well, here in Yorkshire, we call it tickling. But it's more talked about than done. Oh. Now, you do realise that that belongs to Lord Ashfordley. We have saying, vegetables of one's own racing are not relished. Those from other gardens are the best. <laughs> <laughs> I agree entirely. <laughs> oh, besides, I think it belongs to the god of the river. He gave it to me. What, do you think he gave us one? Well, you could try. Yeah, come on, David, have a go. Well, why me? Well, because you know how cold water sets me rheumatism off. Oh! First, you must empty your mind. Have you done that? Oh, yes. All right. Now. Think like a fish. That was quick. Where are they? Over here. It's definitely them, Sergeant. Well done. Those candlesticks look familiar, too. I better have a word with the owner. Who's in there? Mr. Brigstock? I'm Detective Sergeant Dawson, CID. Can you tell me how you came by those snuff boxes over there? Same as everything else. I inherited them from my Uncle Norman. He died last week. We've reason to believe these are stolen goods. We'll need an inventory of the whole shop. I'm working on one at the moment, but how do you know they're stolen? They're on a list of items we've had circulated. We'll have to take the snuff boxes back to the station and then return tomorrow for a full search. I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you for the keys. There you are. How oh, good. He feels you like another fish. Now lift! Oh, oh, oh good! I did it! I did it! <laughs> oh, give a man a fish and you feed him for the day. Teach a man to fish. And the game keep us in trouble, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you have something we value very much. Oh, we're yeah. uh, the fish. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean simplicity. We call it poo. Poo? Yes. It is a sort of passive receptiveness. And I sense you are full of it. Well, that's good, is it? Oh, very good. And very special. Now. I must go feed my people. Time has told me You're a rare, rare find <laughs> Trouble cure For a trouble mine Time has told me Not to ask for more Mrs Tinsworth, can you come and have a look at my Terry now? Something's not right. How do you mean? He's really bad. Not like before. It's, it's, it's terrible coughing. He started wheezing. Wait here. We'll take my car. Wake up, Terry! Nurse is here. Terry! Terry? What's wrong? I'm sorry, Mrs Tinnisland. 
what am I going to do now? brought you some nice fresh eggs for your breakfast. Oh, with true friends, even water drunk together is sweet enough. <laughs> Aye, but fried eggs are better. Oh, also true. <laughs> <laughs> come in, come in, please, please. Okay. Joe? Bit early for your clinic, aren't you? Actually, I've come to see you. I'm just off out. I'm due over in Ashfordly. What's the problem? We've had a sudden death. Who? Terry Tinniswood, 107 Beckett's Close. He'd been coughing blood. And naturally, there'll be a post-mortem. Morning, Alf. I need the form for a sudden death. Oh, one form 48. Who's it for, then? Terry Tinniswood. Non-stick Terry. Haven't heard of him for a bit. Is he known to us? Oh, he used to be very well known. Burglary. But he seems the retired as he came out of prison. It's his wife you want to look out for. Right, Mr. Brinkstock. We'll be spending the day going through your entire stock. Right. Uh, Sarge. What? Those candlesticks you're interested in have gone. Care to explain, Mr. Brinkstock? Don't look at me. You locked the place up yourself. Well, presumably there's more than one set of keys. You had the only set of keys. Either you've moved the stuff or I've been burgled. Tennisman. I'm PC Mason. I'm sorry to hear about your husband. He'll be the only copper who is then. I'm sorry? You lot had it in for him for years. Banged him up for something he hadn't done. There are some formalities that we have to go through. The coroner will be ordering a post mortem, so I'm afraid I have to ask you some questions. Here we go again. Down the nick? That won't be necessary. You best come in then. Here. Oh, just normal stuff, love. They have to ask questions about your dad. I'm sorry about what happened. Here. Go and get some crisps. Thanks, Mum. Eddie. Meant the world to them. Their dad did. Now, what do you want? Just some background information. Had your husband been in poor health? Well, he'd been short of breath for a couple of years. Then he took to his bed with a nasty cough a week ago. Never been right since he come out of prison. Did he work? Do you think anybody's going to take him on after what you coppers did to his reputation? Had he seen a doctor at all about this cough, perhaps? No, nope. Terry didn't hold him. So you've no knowledge of anything that might have led to his death? Do I look like a doctor? The only thing that killed my Terry is what you lot did to him. I keep telling you, I know not about any stolen goods. I only inherited the place last week. From your uncle, Norman Brigstock? That's right. 20 years he'd been running the place. He had no kids, so it came to me. Hmm, were you close to your uncle? Not especially. We'd see each other at family occasions, birthdays, Christmas, that sort of thing. What were you doing before you inherited the business? Travelling. In double glazing. Look, if there's anything stolen, it's down to Uncle Norman, not me. Conveniently. You can see all the records, stock lists, everything. Believe me, Mr Brigstock, we will. But the fact remains, someone removed those candlesticks last night. You locked up! You had the keys! I find it hard to believe there's not more than one set of keys. It's the truth. Uncle Norman was a one-man band. Well, maybe now we can see why. I think we'd better discuss this down at the station. What? A small matter of interfering with evidence. They said in the shop he'd been coughing up blood, so you know what that means. I don't know what. Tuberculosis. TB! Oh, give over. There's been no TB here for years. Exactly, so it must have come from those people on the green. Honestly, 
We spend years getting rid of diseases, then we let foreigners bring them all back in. There's no need for that kind of talk. It's true, Oscar. One of those monks is ill, coughing incessantly. They should be in quarantine. Tina, love, can I have a word? Yeah, sure. You know how you said you might be in the market for a bit of fish? Yeah, Oscar likes a nice bit of fish for his tea. Well, I brought one for you. Five bob. I'm sorry to hear about your burglary. What exactly was taken? A gold statue of Guan Yu, the god of honour and piety. Oh. It was a gift we were taken to Middlesbrough. Can you show me where it was taken from? Uh, upstairs. We were all out, except for Li Chen here. He was sleeping. But he thinks maybe he dreamed two young people were here. Young people? But he's not sure. Uh, no, he's not well, so he sleeps a lot. <laughs> that cough doesn't sound good. Has he had medical attention? We are treating him ourselves with Chinese medicine. <laughs> Brigstock's got a criminal record, you Alf. I'm still waiting for CRO to get back to me. What do you think of his story? Well, I think it stands up. It's easy enough to find out when he acquired the business. I don't believe a word of it. We ask about stolen goods, then some of his stock goes missing. It's too much of a coincidence. We haven't got enough to charge him. No, I know. We're gonna have to let him go. For now. Keep a close eye on him. Maybe he'll slip up. Alf, get on to his former employers. Find out exactly where he was travelling in double glazing. Will do. Oh, Carol, is it true we're all going to be quarantined? <laughs> Whatever for? TB, because Terry Tinniswood was coughing blood and it must have come from the monks. That's ridiculous. There's any number of reasons why Terry might have been coughing blood. Not that it's anyone else's business. The monks have only just got here, so they can't have infected anyone. One of the monks is very ill. Says who? I mean, lots of rumours flying around and people are getting worried. Carol, have you got a minute? Could you come and have a look at one of the monks? He's in a bad way. Yeah, OK. You see? I was right all along. Well, all I'm saying is that old Quan is a nice bloke and he's very highly skilled. Yeah, he says that I'm full of poo. David, that doesn't sound very nice. Oh, no, no, that's a good thing. Yeah, it means that I am following the path. Where to? Well, I'm, um, I'm not quite sure yet, but... <coughs> this man really needs to be in hospital. He is among <laughs> friends. We will care for him. I think he should be properly examined by a doctor. Oh, men grow old, pearls grow yellow. There is no cure for it. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm going to have to insist. I thought you might. Before we let you go, I just want to be absolutely sure we're clear. Apart from the front door and the fire escape, there's no means of access into the building. None. I've told you. You do understand your premises is now a crime scene, and as such you won't be able to open today. So I just suggest you leave us to get on with it. We'll seal the building thoroughly at the end of the day, and if there are any developments, we'll be in touch. Right, then. But I'd like you to remember who's the victim round here. I've been burgled, and if I can't open tomorrow, I'm likely to be seeking compensation. I'm losing business. See Mr Brigstock out, would you, Constable Younger? Yes, Sergeant. This way, please, sir. Right, we'll meet scenes of crime down there. But if Brigstock doesn't have another key, then I'm betting he's got to have another way into that place. So it's true then. One of them's sick. He's going to hospital for observation. What's he got? We won't know until they've carried out tests. But it could be the same as my Terry. Mrs. Tinniswood, I know there have been a lot of rumours going round. But the monks only arrived yesterday. They couldn't have given any infection to Terry. Yeah, but what about my kids? I can't lose them as well. But the man in the ambulance had no contact with Terry, no contact with anyone. He'd have to have gone onto the bus to have any chance of infection. But they did. What? 
They were on the bus. They were just being inquisitive. But they saw that old man coughing. Now, what if he's given them something that he's got? They could be infected too. Uh, we don't know what, if anything, is wrong with him. He may well not even be infectious. But there's no connection between him and Terry's death. And I can't see that your children are at any risk. So put your mind at rest. Oh, no, I'm, I'm sorry, nurse, but I just couldn't bear it if anything happened to them as well. I know. Half the stuff in here could be on the watch list, you know. Sounds like your tip-off was right, then. I've checked the fire door. It's jammed shut. i found another way in. Where? There's a ventilation shaft at the rear. It should just come in through the back of the showroom. We could access it from the lower roof. Looks pretty solid. I don't think it's screwed in properly. Should just slide out. Well, hold on. Let's try and get some fingerprints before we move it. I really can assure you there's no epidemic about to spread through the village. <coughs> These are just two isolated incidents. Thank you, nurse. Honestly, it's like some kind of mass hysteria or something. As if we didn't have enough going on as it is. Everyone's talking TB. I'd just like to know how these rumours got started. The Tinniswood kids. What? Yeah, they went onto the bus last night. The mum's terrified they've caught something. Well, they must be the youngster the monk saw steal the statuette. I suppose it must be. Listen, can you forget I just said that, please? I've got to sort it out. I won't drop you in it, don't worry. Are you OK? How do you mean? You seem a bit... distracted. It's nothing. I've had a letter from an adoption agency. They've managed to trace my mother. That's hardly nothing. That's fantastic. Which is what you've been waiting for, isn't it? it? Turns out she's dead. Ten years ago. Oh, Carol, I'm sorry. Do you want to talk about it? How do you feel? I don't know. I, I think it's still just sinking in. I'm a bit confused. Well, it may help to discuss it. Not the moment. Okay. Look, I'm here for you if you need to talk. We're still friends, aren't we? This is my colleague, PC Younger, Mrs. Tinsley. Forget Tinsworth. the formalities, I'm busy. Can we have a word with your children? What about? We're investigating a crime. Oh, that's great, that is. The poor father's not been dead five minutes, you're trying to pin stuff on him. If we could just have a word. Julie, Eddie, down here. Coppers want to speak to you. Now, mind your manners. Oh, I'm sure they'll be fine. I meant you. Now, what is it? You were seen hanging around the bus on the green last night. Did you go into it? Um, yeah. You've been telling people about what you saw on the bus, haven't you? About the sick man. Oh, it was horrible. Did you take anything? Of course they didn't. They were just being nosy. Is that a crime? Well, that depends. There are witnesses. He, he means the ornament. We found it. Where did you find it? In the road? In the hedge. Yeah, that's right. Well, I think we better take the ornament and continue this down at the police station. It's dusty as hell. The asbestos is breaking up. These are handprints. Yeah, there's scuff marks go all the way in. 
There's definitely been someone through here. If he's not got a second set of keys, this must be his way in. Well, it'll be tricky to make a case. Then let's figure out where to catch him. Red-handed. Just Rosie Tinniswood's going on. I did warn him. So, oh, you can just let us go now. In fact, you can pay for a taxi home. I didn't like the smell of that one's car. PC Mason, can I have a word? Sure. Any luck with criminal records, Alf? Oh, uh, Mr Brigstock hasn't got one. I'm still trying to talk to the former employers. Everything all right in there? We've brought two kids in. I'm pretty sure they stole a gold statuette from the bus part in the village. The mother's a bit of a handful. Sounds like it. You're getting anywhere? Not really. They're sticking to their story that they found it on the road. Anything else to go on? A possible witness, but he's in hospital. I should try that route. And wind it up, would you? We need some help in here. Yeah, I don't want any undesirables in my police station. I'll get onto it right now, Sarge. Oh, make them a cup of tea, Jeff. Thank you. Let me know as soon as you hear anything more, Alf. I'll be in Sergeant Miller's office. Right. Mr Kwan, our David mentioned something about precious jewels. What, what are they, then? Uh, the three jewels of the Tao are kindness, simplicity and modesty. Oh, so they're not real jewels, then, are they? Oh, oh they're more valuable than any gemstone could be. Well, they reckon that I've got them. Oh, I'd say you have, David. You use these to follow the path of life, or as we call it, the Tao. They will always be your guide. So you think I should try this, then? The journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step. Hi. Hi. Any news of our monk? Not good. He's had a chest x-ray, which is showing terminal lung cancer. I'm afraid he hasn't got very long to live. Any chance of getting him to attend an identity parade? Not in the slightest. How about taking a statement? You can try, but you can't speak a word of English. I'll take that as I know then. I better call the station. Tell him to let the Tinniswoods go. Where are you off to? Well, better go tell his friends. Hang on, I'll come with you. I need to talk to them too. Okay. Ashford Lake Police Station. Do us a favour. If you want to lift, I'm afraid I'm busy. Next time you want to pin some on someone. Pick on a different family. Are you two out? Uh, Mr. Brigstock's former employers. Oh, yes. What did they say? Uh, his patch covered Lancashire, Cumberland, and Westmoreland. That's where the antiques came from. Well, it's unlikely to be a coincidence. Exactly. Can you ask Mr. Brigstock to come in and see us? Just tell him we want to bring him up to date. Nothing serious. So you have a new recruit? Ah, oh, he takes to it naturally. Those who know how to follow the path are very rich indeed. <laughs> I'm afraid your friend is very ill. Uh, he has lung cancer. You knew them, why didn't you say? Uh, you wanted to test him your own way. You wouldn't have been satisfied with what I said. He may not have very long to live. We know that as well. He wants to die among his friends. Can we have him back, please? I'll speak to the doctor and arrange for an ambulance. Oh, thank you very much. We found your statue. Oh, you have? Oh, that is good news. Can we have that back too, please? In due course. It's been logged as evidence, so there are procedures to go through. Oh, but our bus will be fixed tomorrow and then we must leave. I'll see what I can do. Thank you. Nice fish. If you want some, we have plenty more to share. Thank you for coming in, Mr Brigstock. I'm sorry our inquiries are taking so long. I'm perfectly happy to cooperate, but at the end of the day, I've got a business to run. Oh, we understand that, but we do need another day. What for? I can see that my uncle came by some items which may have been stolen, but now I've been burgled. And you don't seem to be doing much about that. Our investigations are continuing. There's a couple of other items we need to look at. What now? Well, we're not sure. There are some experts coming over tomorrow from Lancashire. Lancashire? 
Why Lancashire? This is quite a wide-ranging inquiry. So what do they want? They're going to look over your stock, in case there are any other items of interest to them. And how long is that going to take? Just a day. We'll be here in the morning. And that should clear everything up. I'm fine, really. It's just a bit like I was given something and then had it taken away again. Oh, you must be so disappointed. In a way, yeah. But maybe it's helped me mend my mind up. What do you mean? I always knew I had a mother, I mean, obviously. And now I don't anymore. But I've still got a brother in Australia. What about him? I'm not going to lose out twice. I'm going to find him. Night off. The areas where Brigstock was working correspond closely with where the burglaries were carried out. You think he was the burglar? It's too early to say. He may just have been the link back to Ashfordley. But he has to know what's going on and what the Lancashire detectives might be looking for. So you think he'll try and move more stuff? Exactly. Anything else he's got a guilty conscience about is likely to go missing. So Joe and Don, you lock yourselves in for the night and wait for him to turn up, either through the front door or the ventilation shaft. Then we'll have him banged to rights. What about me, Sergeant? You'll be with me, in civvies. We'll watch Brigstock's house. Then we'll have a complete chain of evidence. Oh, right. Could be worse places to spend the night, I suppose. I just hope you don't snore. Well, you could be about to find out. Heading Julie Tenniswood? No, it's not what it looks like. I think it's exactly what it looks like. time ages ago. I thought we might have a knock-in. Well, you thought wrong. Did you have a nice fish for your tea? What if I did? Well, then you should remember who your friends are. Gina, have you been serving up poached fish? Oh, no, it wasn't poached. It was grilled. <laughs> I thought it was yummy. <laughs> there you are, then. And there's plenty more where that came from. 
Oh, come on. It's worth a pint at least. What is all the fuss about? Have you been buying fish from Peggy Armstrong here? Oh, why? Am I under arrest? Handling <laughs> stolen goods is a criminal offence. Oh, don't talk daft, Oscar. It was just a fish. Besides, it was a gift from the god of the river. Oh, Juan said so. Did he now? And you know what else? He's taught me how to tickle them. <laughs> hey! <laughs> It's no good. It's jam solid. Here, put the syringe of face. Wait, why don't we use the tunnel? Of course. Come on. You go. Your time. Move on, Don. I'm not sure I'll fit, Joe. You better. I'll be right behind you. Go. Get in there. <laughs> in the car. Yeah, I want to work with him. You all need to get to the hospital. I'm fine. Hospital now? Have you never heard of smoke inhalation? We need to get you all seen to. <coughs> and who are these kids? Meet the tennis woods. Ah, where are they? The doctor's with them now, Mrs. Tenniswood. They're fine. So I can take them home? For tonight, yes. But they will have to face criminal charges. It's not their fault. It's the father's. I don't see how they took their own decision to commit burglary. Terry showed him the way in. You mean your husband used to burgle Brickstock's antiques? <laughs> Terry was in and out of there for years. He called it his hospital job. If he didn't have another one on, he could always go there. <laughs> well, Terry knew that Brickstock was a fence, so the old man wasn't going to report a theft, was he? Chances are the stuff were nicked already, so no harm done. I thought you said your husband gave up crime after he was released from prison. My Terry was a professional. He had a family to support. Hello. Ah! This is Mr Blaketon from the pub. Ah, oh, Hawk one. Oscar Blaketon, look about these fish. Oh, and your pork pies too. Thank you very much. You're most kind and we are, appreciate your generosity. Ah, it was my pleasure. David tells me you were a chindit. Oh, yes. I was with General Wingate. I was his translator. I was in Burma, too. Ah. Oh. A changi. Ah, oh, difficult times. Uh, would you like a cup of tea? It would be an honour. Ah, oh, thank you. Please, please. Morning. Morning. The post-mortem on Terry Tenniswood has just been sent over. All right, what was the result? He died of bronchopneumonia. That wouldn't have killed him, not on its own. It was complicated by something called asbestosis. Oh, well, that would explain it then. I wonder where he picked that up from. What is it exactly? If you come into contact with all the broken asbestos, you inhale these tiny fibres. They can sit in your lungs for years and then suddenly start a reaction like cancer. I've never heard of this. Well, it's been known for years, but nobody seems to be doing anything about it. If you look back through Terry's life somewhere, he will have been working with asbestos. If he'd taken other people to the place where he inhaled the dust, then they might have it too. No might about it, they will have it. And it's a death sentence. Don and I were in this ventilation shaft last night with the Tinniswood kids. It was full of asbestos dust. We had masks over our faces. We'd better get you checked out. But it was just a one-off incident. It's not like you've been regularly exposed. It's true. But the Tinniswood kids have. Is there anything you'd like to say? No. See yourself. You think we got him? On all counts. Must have been in it up to his neck. I shall make my mistake. So you can have your station back now. Lord Ashfordley wants to speak to whoever's in charge. Well, I'll be him. See you later. Acting Sergeant Weatherby speaking. You half with Weatherby, you were supposed to keep an eye on my trousers. 
What now? I'm here as the coroner's officer, Mrs. Tennisbit. You best come in then. What are you staring at? He's here because my Terry died. We've had the results from your husband's post-mortem. The coroner's releasing his body so you can make funeral arrangements. What did he die of? Pneumonia. But he also had a fatal lung condition. I told him he should see a doctor. What was it? Asbestosis. Never heard of it. It's caused by inhaling dust from damaged asbestos. It can lie dormant in the lungs for years, decades, before it develops. But why would Terry be anywhere near asbestos? There was a lot in the ventilation shaft at Brigstock's Antiques. You said your husband was a frequent visitor. So this stuff can kill you? Eventually. As I say, it can take decades. I breathed it in myself last night, but that wasn't just one occasion. Terry took the kids in there. How many times? Lots of times. Lots and lots. You mean they're going to get it as well? I'm afraid it's likely, yes. But you can't know for sure. I'm sorry, but if they've had regular exposure... No, 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 no. That, that can't be right. No. Not my kids. Please, tell me that that is not right. Sorry, I can't, Mrs Tenswood. What? Do, my kids are going to die, same as Terry, because of something he did. I'm very sorry. <laughs> Mom, can we go for... He's currently demanding my guts for garters. I'm on the way to see him now. Why? Well, while we were tackling a serious crime, someone decimated his ruddy fish, that's what. Really? Uh, I said we'd look after his river before some angling competition. You didn't tell me. Well, we had more important stuff to do. And while I thought I was on my way to a commendation, he's going to put in a complaint, and that's all Sergeant Miller's going to see when he gets back. I think you'd better follow me. Are you sure you want to go? I mean, folk round here have got used to you now. Oh, it is the time of our going, but maybe one day we will return. <laughs> David, what about you? You want to travel with us? No. No, I'll stay here. I, uh, I belong here. It is the beautiful bird that gets caged. <laughs> so this is what all the fuss is about? We would like I imagine to... so. Uh, right. Is he Weatherby? Can I have a word? Uh, not just now, Highness Mrs. Jarrett. And generosity. Right. Who's responsible for this fish? Because someone's been catching these fish and someone's been eating them. Now who? I have. Uh, no, I am responsible. Oh, no, I am. Me too. And me, Don. Uh, Gina? I may have purchased one inadvertently. Uh, Don. I get it. They're all ruddy Spartacus. No, the thing is, um, I might have had some too. Look, I think that Ho Kwan and his colleagues are ready to make a move. As soon as they've had this item return to them. Ah, uh, thank you very much. Nemo uh, can? Uh, uh, right, I suggest you make a move before I change my mind. Uh, chora, chora. Uh, said about if I wanted to talk. Yeah? I think I'd like that. Hey, you're such a nice <sighs> chap. I hope he comes back soon. He who digs deepest, deepest digs. Mm. Well, that's you, isn't it, David? And I want you to dig deep in your pocket and buy me a pint. <laughs> Don't you know I follow me? However they got up there, it's a pro job, this. And he took on a new window cleaner. 
You make a lovely couple, don't you? Ask him what he knows about Rosie's current whereabouts. So Rosie's not come home with them? No. Help! Somebody! No! Police, we'd like a word. 